Hi everybody, I'm going to try to stream this one to show you the eye socket. And the eye socket is one of these little tools that help you troubleshooting the iPhone 10 split logic board. So these guys, there's a couple of these out there. These guys allow you to troubleshoot without having to re-solder the two halves of the iPhone 10 logic board back together. So I've, I'm trying to make some short videos that'll actually be usable. This one, though, I'm going to take a chance and stream. It's a lot easier to get content on YouTube by streaming it rather than trying to make videos and editing them. Plus, I've been on vacation and I miss my stream people. All right, so let's see what this looks like. I found this incredibly confusing the first time that I tried to use it. So it starts with this sort of base magnetic block. And then this piece goes on like this. Now, I think that's what's probably the most confusing part because it seems like it should go like this. Maybe it does go like that. That's, there's like no, maybe it's on this side, I don't really know. <laughs> but I found that to be really, really confusing. In fact, I think it probably does go like that. We'll give that a shot and see if that works. All right, so this, um, this is step one to put that base on there and then Next, you're going to put your bottom board, the RF board. So this is our bottom board, and this is a working iPhone 10. so hopefully it will still be working. So we are going to kind of line it up on here where it goes on. I'll probably have to readjust this a few times because I, find, I still find this incredibly, incredibly confusing. So there's one, two, three, four little posts, and it's only going to attach to two of the posts so it's just attaching to these two posts so this post is still just kind of hanging out in the wild all right next comes the faux interconnect board now when i was first got this I was trying to put this together i'll give you a page in, of my what not to do column uh do not ever under any circumstance be tempted to unscrew these little screws here so i'll show you under the microscope what this thing looks like uh let's click over to uh, microscope and th this is the little interconnect board and it is made of all of these little gold pins now I was dumb enough to think that it, lo it looks like it's two maybe you're supposed to to you know, unscrew these things split it apart and you know use just one of them or, or you know put the sandwich them on either side of uh, one of these iPhone 10 boards. That is not true. What happens if you do unscrew them is, you guessed it, every single one of these little gold kind of watch pins, they w it will come raining down on your desk. And then you're gonna be doing this for the rest of the afternoon and putting each one back in its little socket. Now what I do like, and I'd, I'd like for maybe one of you guys to do instead of me, See, why don't you take some of these out so that we can figure out exactly which connections really are required for the iPhone 10 to boot. Not all of these interconnect connections are going to be required, but some of them are. And we could probably guess from the schematic, but it would be kind of fun since it would be so easy to just delete some of them. So this then is going to go on here. And it really kind of fits on there you kind of have to wiggle it into place but it seems to be pretty forgiving i guess all right and then next our top main board this is where all of the data is and the the good stuff all right so that is going to sandwich on top like that now here's one thing that i've learned once we put on our top uh top bracket and pressure squeegee this all together it's really hard to get the screen to connect since it has to connect up here and down there so it might make sense to do the screen first and then come back and put that on so we'll, we'll go ahead and make it clear by leaving that off uh, for now all right how does the tool work does it work good well so far it seems to work and that's i've only tried it um a little bit so i wanted to make this video since one of these has come up all right so there we go so that just kind of snaps into place now this one is called the eye socket we're going to ultimately try out a, a few of these and then we'll make the ipad rehab pick and then we'll sell that in ipad rehab 
uh, supply store uh, in our iPhone 10 collection. All right, so now let's try it. Let's see if this works because this logic board should be a working one. So I'm going to attach the screen. This is a known good screen. And I'm excited because what I really want to get to today is a test to see whether or not we can mix, mix and match a iPhone 10 main board with a different iPhone 10 RF or baseband board. Can we mismatch the top and bottom boards and then kind of update using the iOS beta 1, iOS 12 beta 1? that ignores baseband and get one to boot. Because a lot of times, in the, you know, the, the iPhone 10 that I was just working on now uh, had a VCC main short, but it was in the RF board. So it's not in the, the main board that has the, the meat of the phone. So I'm hoping that maybe I could put that probably working main board with a different working bottom board. So that's the experiment that I really want to get to. But I wanted to have some. I wanted to have some short videos of how to work with the iPhone 10, and this one is going to be one of them. All right. So what I've done now is uh, all I've done here is I have plugged in. This is your charge port. This is your display. This is your digitizer connector, and then we have our battery connector. So for battery, I am going to use the. Um, the iPad Rehab Supply favorite squid. So everybody likes different squids for different reasons. And this one has an iPhone 10 connector. Now, not all of the iPad Rehab squids have iPhone 10. We're going to oh, see the digitizer connector already popped off again. So plug that in. There we go. So I plugged that in as well. So I think we're having a little bit of white balance stuff. So there we go. Now I have this connected to my DC power supply. I'm going to plug it in on DC power supply. And I don't think I'm going to be able to get this camera to see that. There we go. There's my DC power supply. So what I'm going to do to prompt it to boot, since I've just plugged in a charge port, I'm going to prompt it to boot with USB. So while I'm holding this, I'm going to prompt it to boot with USB, and then we'll watch to see does it start looking like it's going to boot, and it does. So we'll look back down at it. There it is, and we see Apple logo. So let's see if it's going to boot loop or if it's going to boot all the way up. And that will be the end of how to use the eye socket. All right. Um, where did you go on holidays? I went to visit my dad in Maryland, and I went to the World Board Gaming Championship, which was really fun. All right, it sounds like the uh, computer just recognized the device, so that's a good thing. Um, will the screen cable survive that abuse? All right, so here we are. Let's see. Yeah, the touch, the touch cable down there, that touch one, it's just too, too, too much of a stretch. So I am going to say that, yeah, I would, um, I would say, let's start using these things. These are the, the little cable extenders. So I'm going to try it with the cable extenders, I think. Now, this is my known good screen, so I know that does work. But um, I think that's sort of a good little case here for the eye socket. That was fairly easy to execute and what we can do instead is just plug our screen into these screen extenders these are expensive screens um, and then we can do it i would do it like this next time take off that bracket and then go ahead and plug this little screen extender and i want to see how this works we might as well see how this works since this is part of our how to develop best practices to work on this sucker. So we'll go ahead and attach the screen extender, which I'm going to guess, I haven't tried it yet, I'm going to guess it's going to go like that. Then we'll put on our bracket. Now this is required because that's what really kind of creates the, the tension. So let's see, I guess that's not going to work. Let's leave that bottom one on. 
get everybody hooked back on. There we go. Nice and solid. All right, then let's make it so you guys can see. And we're going to pop this down and snap, snap it on. And then we can fairly easily connect our LCD connector up here. All right. Did you get the tool yet for programming the screens? Programming screens? Nope. No, but we're, we have really just been, I think right now we are only taking iPhone 10 for data recovery just because it seems to get a lot of problems. All right, so then let's guess how these are going to go together. All right, this thing at least is kind of marked. It's marked LCM, so screen, and then FPT, which I'm guessing means touch. So let's see if those go together. Let's see if this is the way it works or if we're wrong. All right, let's see. Feel like boycotting Apple products. I am just tentatively really sad about, you know, about Apple products. I was all excited and super proud of them. You know, believe it or not, despite my how many videos are on my channel that are sort of like, God damn it, and negative about Apple, I, I always kind of give them the benefit of the doubt. I don't believe in planned obsolescence. And I think that, you know, when you get to be a really big company, it's hard to keep all your ducks in a row that makes sense. So in, later today, I'll, sh I'll uh, share with you guys the, um, the latest news with the baseband CPU problems in the iPhone 7, but man, I thought that they did something really awesome, and I think that maybe I'm wrong about that. So that's going to come up later today. I'm planning to hang out here and fix stuff. All right, so now I've got that hooked back together with the screen cables. Let's try these out. So I'm going to prompt to boot here by plugging into my charge port. All right, now let's see what happens. All right, well the display part at least is working. Let's tip that down. And we'll see whether or not touch works. So I'm if if this is exactly how you set this up and that works, then I'm going to adopt that as uh, a better uh, option. Now, I can't remember whether or not that screen extender came with the eye socket. Okay, yeah, so there we go. So we have touch. Uh, so, you know, plus one for the, for the screen extender cables. Um, but those are definitely going to be important. So I'm going to recommend whatever tool you ultimately use. Um, so next, I'm going to try and figure out this other one. So this one I've never used. So uh, to keep this stream short, I'm going to cut off this one since we have uh, demonstrated how to use the eye socket in general, and that's what this stream is going to be about. I'm going to try to figure out this red one, see if that one also works, better or worse. And then we're going to uh, come back later today with what I really want to try and to see, can you swap bottom and top boards from two different iPhone 10s and get one that will boot. So that is it for this stream.